Our journey starts at the International Airport in Frankfurt. Our first stop is Istanbul, gate to the Orient. From here, we will leave to Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. We aim to hunt the mighty Maral. Close to extinction, not nearly 40 years ago, Russian and Chinese poachers relentlessly pursued this graceful species, selling their antlers as powder in the alternative medicine markets. At that time, the Mongolian government took an innovative approach. They auctioned off two of the remaining licenses at high prices. The proceeds were directed into the anti-poaching fund, supplemented by government funds. Mongolia thus crafted an outstanding success story. Fortunately, Maral population have made a remarkable recovery. We now wish to assess the true state of these populations. Arrived in Mongolia, we had to realize that the hunt could not take place in the agreed-upon Altai Mountains. After countless phone calls and a two-day stay in Ulaanbaatar, our course was finally set. <laughs> Our biggest problem is that there is no camp set up in the Altai Mountains. This will cause serious power problems pretty quick. We need a camp with some sort of power supply. Otherwise, I have to stop the project, which would be a disaster. Let's stay optimistic and let's see what we can do from here. It was a tough flight. Let's have a beer first. How do you say cheers in Mongolia? Good morning, guys. new designated area was South Shanghai in central Mongolia, a high plateau 1,913 meters above sea level. The one and a half million square kilometers of Mongolia are inhabited by only three million people. This makes Mongolia the least densely populated country in the world. 40% of the population are living in Ulaanbaatar. The landscape is dominated by grass-covered steppes. The land is rugged and the soil offers limited opportunities for agriculture. Just a bit further south, the vegetation gradually transitions into the Gobi Desert. As we venture into the wilderness, we repeatedly come across small villages. In the last town before the vast emptiness, we made a final stop. We left Ulaanbaatar two and a half hours ago and stopped in this small village. We will try to buy some groceries and continue along the road. The ongoing inflation hit the Mongolians hard. We paid 40 euros for some goods which converts into 164,000 Mongolian Tukriks.
This is a quite common picture to the left and right here on the road. This really symbolizes the wilderness for me. If an animal dies, there is no road maintenance department that takes care of this carcass. The vulture comes into play and serves as a health inspector. That's the circle of life. We stopped at the resting area for drug drivers, quite similar to a gas station. This is the first time I'm trying the Zute tea a salty milk tea, lukewarm. Not quite sure what this is, but we'll try. We have been driving for six hours now, and the vastness of Mongolia is truly remarkable. We just visited the desert stretch, likely part of the Gobi Desert. We are currently in central Mongolia, and I hope we'll get to explore some of the mountains soon. in the middle of nowhere. So we're in the camp. We arrived at the camp. We will explore the hunting ground now to get a feeling for the upcoming hunt. weapon control. Gun of choice was the Merkel Helix Carbon, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum. Bullet of choice was the Speed Tip Professional from RWS. Zweiter Schuss. But my, also ich hatte einfach krass Puls. Das war die schlechteste Ausgangssituation für mich.
Wahnsinn. Innerhalb von jetzt Crazy. 30 Sekunden. Within 30 seconds, heavy fog came up. Visibility went from 800 to 200 meters. In a few seconds, probably less than 50 meters. Wahrscheinlich nicht mal mehr 50. We had to move on. The visibility was just too low. What an unbelievable experience. We took cover here at this ridge. I'm using a fawn call and the bulls are reacting to it. We have six bulls on the other hillside. All of a sudden, a white massive head from a wolf shows up from out of nowhere, staring at us. Our hunting guide gave permission to shoot. I was just too slow though. What a magical experience. I'll never forget this sight. Truly amazing. Our first stalk here in Mongolia is over and it looks very promising. We saw many maral that are in the rut and on top a white wolf. We head back to camp now and we will be back in the afternoon. Our interpreter Bogi shows us the local goods that are traditionally used and eaten by the Mongolians, especially by the shepherds. I ask him what this is, and he says it's cream from the sheep. Yes, he said, that comes from the sheep. He showed me curd, tried curd. It's made from the yellow stuff that comes out of the milk. And then he shows me the traditional alcohol they drink. It's made out of horse milk. They collect it and steer it over and over until it turns. It will become sour, he said, and then it is Eirak. He wants me to try it. But he warned me, don't drink too much of it. Diarrhea can be a result, even for the Mongolians themselves. He compared it to Iran from the Turkish and asked me if I have tried this. 
Yes, I did. But for me, it tastes like cider. Sour cider. The Mongolians were pretty excited from our gear. The unmistakable rotting call of the Maral. So, der erste wirkliche Jagdtag geht zu Ende hier in der Mongolei. The first full hunting day comes to an end. We can be really happy. We hear the Maral rutting in the back. We also saw a wild dog from the village. He can be happy that he was quicker than our guide. He took my rifle and wanted to shoot him. The whole village wants the dog to be killed. The dog lives together with the wolf. Maybe even the wolf we saw this morning. We had a chance to take a shot on a big bull today, but I decided not to take the shot. Distance was between 340 and 360 meters. A doable distance, but the wind was strong and pretty much unpredictable. This is our first hunting day and we saw a ton of game. Let's try to work on a better chance. I would like to get a 100% type of shot on camera. We will be back tomorrow morning. See you then, Weidmannsheil. Ja, gebürtig einzufangen. Äh, wir sind morgen früh wieder hier. Bis dahin, bleibt man Teil. Second morning in Mongolia, we got up super early to get on top of this hill that is covered by thick bushes on the other side. Our guide said that we are close to the area where the bulls rest during the day. We will take cover at the ridge in front of us and wait for the game to move in. Our plan works. A bull just moved into the thick bush. I decided not to take a shot because he seemed not old enough. His antler spread was already pretty impressive, but overall too young. 
We will move up further now for our final position. The second morning flew by. We are not able to get in shooting position. We are moving way too fast and aggressive, in my opinion. We saw between six and eight bulls today, and every single one of them was aware of us. We will do two things now. First, we will ask our guide to stalk more carefully with us together. We have to stay out of the field of view of the morale. Second, we will share our camo gear with the guys. I hope this will help us. Gerade auf dem relativ frischen Nagali. We just came across the Scovi Agali skull. That is super impressive. The horns are already massive on this younger specimen. And this is definitely a young piece. We made it back. Definitely an extremely dangerous situation out here. We are in the middle of a thunderstorm. Lightning strikes 30 meters next to us. We are on flat ground up high. And the thunder is right above us. Pat, asking the gods not to harm us. We need to get out. Our guide Pat is calling a friend in the village for the weather report. Bad weather was the forecast today, but we had luck so far. If it gets worse, we'll have to head back to camp. If not, we stay and try to keep our heads down. I ask our guide if there are any news from the village. He answered that there are no good news. Weather will get worse, and it looks like we're better off if we go. 
I went and asked my interpreter if there are any news from the village. He responded that it doesn't look too good. We should be back tomorrow and head back to camp for now. Let's wait for the night. Hello, please come in. I show you our Mongolian yurt and how we live here. And that's how we sleep in Mongolia. The yurt is very typical for the nomads. In the center of each yurt you will find the oven. The Mongolians use dried cow dung to fire it up. It keeps us warm during the cold nights. We have some light that is connected to a car battery. We have a plug here to load the batteries for the camera equipment. If you plan to come, don't forget to bring a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad. The bed is rock hard. On this side, we have our bath for at least some hygiene. And there's a table for coffee in the early mornings before we leave to hunt. There's a generator outside of the camp for our equipment. It runs for two to three hours a day. Enough for us. Follow me and I'll show you the rest of the camp. This is what we call the kitchen yurt. This is where we eat. Let me introduce our team to you. This is Bogi, our interpreter. This is Boya, he built the camp. This is Inke, our driver. Bayra, the cook. And Pat, our hunting guide. Weather change. It got ice cold. The rot is at its peak now. Temperatures have always been a main factor of the rot. What a crazy situation. There was so much game around us. Females, young bulls, old bulls. Most of the old bulls were about four to 500 meters away. We had one pretty close at 200 meters. But a misunderstanding between me and the cameraman regarding the light conditions led to the conclusion that I did not take the shot. The bull moved to the thickening and laid down. Shooting him, laying down is not an option. As soon as he got up, he moved to 400 meters in a blink of an eye. Too far for great camera footage. What a pity.
a group of wolf hybrids. They are getting more and more active on our hunting grounds. We came across a true giant. He stands broadside on 500 meters. We have gusty wind from the west, which is left. He saw us and he knows we are still there. A rugged valley with insufficient cover for another stalk separates us. With a heavy heart, I choose not to take a shot. So, Tagesresümee für heute leider ein bisschen enttäuschend. Äh, wieder unfassbar viel Wild im Anblick gehabt, aber alles soweit. Heute Morgen war eine Top-Situation. I am a little frustrated. We saw a lot of game, but everything was too far away. We had such a great opportunity this morning. The moment when the first bull stood broadside at 230 meters. I really should have taken the shot. We spent the rest of the day hunting a true monster bull, the biggest maral I've seen so far. Massive spread of antlers, but always that far away. Closest he got was 450 meters, but never full broadside. There's just so much that can go wrong, especially with all those branches in between. At the end, he was facing us directly, and I was close to pull the trigger. But eventually, I couldn't pull myself through. The area behind me is full of wolves. Seeing wolves got normal. On top we have those hybrids. It's a group of five, and they are really putting pressure on the area. The pressure of all those predators makes it so hard for us right now. I've been through a lot, but it was never that hard. Tomorrow is a new day, our last day. Let's put everything in it. The last hunting day dawns. Today it has to work. We didn't come that far to go home empty-handed. I load my magazine one last time. We stalked early upon those thickenings that are shelter for those mighty bulls. We hope to catch the maral once again moving in. Our plan seems to work. My maral is standing in front of me. For 10 days, no weeks, months, I've worked towards this exact moment.
eye to eye at 135 meters. The bullet hits perfect. The 4200 joule of the RWS Speed to Professional connecting to the chest. He's hit, the ears are dropping, and the mighty Maral takes his last breath. Was ein Moment. What Wir a moment. We got our morale. The last days were full of ups and downs. Due to the Mongolian people, I've learned a complete new way of hunting. The Mongolians are Buddhists, but also shamanists. When we arrived in the area 10 days ago, the first thing our guide did was buying local vodka. I asked him why, and he responded, we have to give something to the mountain before we can take something from the mountain. I didn't take this that seriously, to be honest. Well, it didn't play out that well for us in the last couple of days. I brought vodka too, but from home, to celebrate with the team and the Mongolians if we had success. When I got up this morning, I thought to myself, maybe they are right. Maybe I have to give to the mountain before I take. So I sacrificed my bottle of vodka to the mountain this morning. Well, worth to mention, when I gave my Maral his last honor with the last bite, our guide asked me to use the branches that are already broken off and on the ground. No need for more destruction, he said. The trees are holy. And the mountain has given you enough. That is a very special way to live. Something I will never forget. It is absolutely extraordinary how close the Mongolian people are with the nature and the mountains that surrounding them. Our success spread fast around the area. The lack of technical equipment prevents us to bring the morale back to camp in one piece. Therefore, we have to quarter the game right on site. So, wie is it? As you can see, we have a lot of helping hands. Everyone is happy that we got our morale. They are happy for keeping the meat. I just heard that they really appreciate that the Maral was shot up front. For them, this means more meat, because both shoulders are still intact. I wouldn't shoot roe deer or boars like this, that's for sure. <laughs>
A wonderful time here in Mongolia comes to an end. What a fantastic adventure. It was exactly as wild as I hoped it to be. The mountains, the game, that's all a league of its own. The people are extremely hospital, heartfelt and helpful. I am really proud to be able to experience something like this. Hunting success on the last day and we are fortunate to put this morale in our bag. We captured our journey for you on camera. And I hope we brought you closer to the Mongolian mentality and their way of hunting. I would like to thank everyone who made this possible. Weidmannsheil. <laughs>